it has been a predictable strategy of the Israeli army to attack and continue the unnecessary cruelty towards the Palestinians. Since the start of the holy month of Ramadan, the Israeli army has bombed Gaza. On 7 May, Israeli police just stormed the compound of Al-Aqsa Mosque, the third holy site in Islam. The police used tear gas, rubber bullets, and stun grenades against those Palestinians. By 70 May, the United Nations estimated that Israel had demolished 94 buildings in Gaza, comprising 461 housing and commercial units. Killing at least 232 Palestinians, including 65 children, and injuring more than 1,900 lives. Why does this happen? And what can we do to help? And how can we stop this? understand the Israel-Palestinian conflict more deeply, we must know the history first. Jewish pressing on Usmania to hand over Palestine to them, but it was vehemently opposed. But with a cleaning game, they managed to incite uh, the Arabs to hate Usmania. Eventually, the Arab revolution was resulted, in which they also helped British defeat uh, Usmania in World War I. Jews also helped British to produce powerful weapons to defeat the central force uh, which Usmania is in there. So, British is being thankful for Jews and recognize Palestine as the land of Jewish with the Balfour Declaration. From there, the struggle of the persecuted Palestinians to, de to defend their homeland began. We can see that how biased the British were as a major player in World War I. They made a promise with Arabs to establish the Arab Caliphate after the fall of Usmania, they said. But at the same time, they made a secret psychic spike treaty under which the Allied Pacts would take over lands formerly owned by Usmania. They Retreat their promise. Whereas in the Buffalo Buff, Balfour Declaration, there was a condition under which they would not betray um, the civil rights on non Jewish. But it looks like this condition has, has not done. Based on the situation of the Palestinian peoples today, has this promise really been fulfilled? There is one more thing to know. This is not a fair fight at all. If we observe, Palestinians are always being hurt. The media is filled with Palestinian suffering and Israeli army attacks Palestinians with no signs of guilt or remorse. So, from this, where do we see Palestinians as being dangerous terrorists? Let's take a look at who the real terrorists are. First and foremost, Israel army aims to destroy residential areas, mosques, and hospitals. To prove this, let's look at the death toll and number of buildings destroyed by both sides. Israel had destroyed more than 1,000 buildings, completely or partially, 40 schools and 4 hospitals. 19 medical facilities and has struck the Al Shati refugee camp, killing 232 people, injuring 1,900 and displacing 72,000 others. On the other hand, Hamas rockets has killed 12 Israelis and injured 200 others. Besides that, Israeli army attacks without any warning. Meanwhile, Hamas makes an announcement before launching an attack in order for civilians to escape. Other than that, I have yet to see any credible news reporting Israelis dying in large numbers. Meanwhile, innocent Palestinians are dying shaheed in large numbers. Last but not least, Israel's army has all equipment and paraphernalia to attack. Meanwhile, fellow Palestinians can only throw rocks to defend themselves against fully armed Israel army. Israel has a missile defense system called Iron Dome protect the country from incoming projectiles. 
Palestinians have no way of protecting themselves from incoming projectiles. This is clearly not a fair fight. Imagine someone coming coming to your land and taking it from you without consent and killing you with fully armed weapons. Is it fair? These Zionists just create a whole new level of inhumanness when they are inside the compound of a place of worship and attack the defenders worshipper and yet they play victim. They went there for the arm yet blame the rock for the Palestinian for being all the blame. It is just common sense people. Their nature is taken in and they were trying to protect their motherland. A person who fight for his motherland is known as freedom fighter and not a terrorist. Let's take a quick look at the definition of terrorist. According to Oxford University, a terrorist is a person who uses unlawful violence and intimidation, especially against civilians, in the pursuit of political scheme. Hmm, I wonder who that is. This is for you guys who were saying the Israel army attacked worshippers in Masjid al-Aqsa due to the lack social distancing. First of all, who in the world should use gun and smoke grenades to disperse a person? Let's allow worship recording. There is no the way, people. Secondly, the attack has been going for years now. Yeah, that's right, years. The Zionists have attacked worshippers during a month of Ramadan in 2017 until 2020. And another knows if Zionists actually care about combating in pandemic, Palestinians should also be provided with vaccine just as they have 60% of their netizen. This map from 1948 to 2021 clearly shows the inhuman attitude of the Zionists. In this digital era, it is, more, it is much more convenient to teach stories and play victim when you control the world media and economy. People of all countries have been brainwashed by their cop and bull story and are blindfolded towards the real truth. And in case if anyone has the courage to voice up against this cruel, inhuman violence, they will be labeled as anti-Semitic because of these many celebrities and dignitaries choose to remain silent. It is high time they develop a spine. So, now we know the history, the differences and of course, the cold hard facts behind the crisis. You must be wondering how we can help them, what can we do as an individual to help our brothers and sisters in Palestine. Well, as an individual, we can avoid buying their products. By boycotting them, we can defend them economically. Other than that, we, as the future Islamic scholars, have to study with all our might, as we are the generation that will define the future. We need to bring up experts that can develop new medicines, new technology to find breakthroughs, to find miraculous cure, and to develop self-defense system. We need to stop relying on superpower countries and at least start to do things on our own. The change that we can bring as an individual might seem small, but it gradually builds up over time. But the change that we can do together as a community is bigger. So what can we do as a community? Well, every Muslim nation must stand together. If any of them is being attacked or gets into a crisis, the other countries should help. One way of turning this into a reality is through OIC, Organization of Islamic Cooperation. OIC should step up and unite all of us. Besides that, we must raise awareness to the people all around the world so that they will know the truth and not be fooled by hot news. One way of doing this is by making and sharing videos like this. That's all from us. Thank you for watching. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.